Hi, welcome to Wisconsin Family. I'm Jessa Jeremiah. And I'm Justin Riley, and we are here at the Steinway store over in, on the west side of Madison. We and it's indeed. a beautiful place. This is like, what, our third or fourth show, or I think, over here, maybe? Oh, it's and incredible. Yeah, we've enjoyed our time here, and Janet's usually here. I'm filling in for her today. Welcome back. Thanks. Good to yeah. be with you again. Yeah, it's great to be here, yeah. especially in such a beautiful spot, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know you are very musically inclined, and I would like to think I am. Mm -hmm. I took piano lessons as a kid, and I yeah. still like to play every now and again, but I need to read the music. Right. <laughs> so, not that good. I but look at my hands. That's my thing. Oh, I, yeah. I, I memorize it, then I look at my hands. Yes. Uh, but this inspires me to pick it back up because it is such a great art form and it's so enjoyable. Yeah, and if, if you have a piano at home that you just haven't played in a while, it could be that it's just not as high quality as what you can find here. And I find myself just like wanting to try all the different mm -hmm. pianos. So Beautiful we're going to talk with Ben a little bit later on in the program. He's going to talk about really the difference in quality between your average piano and then Steinway's and then uh, some of the other brands that Steinway mm -hmm. has We're going to well. get him to play a little for us too. So. Yes. Stick around for that. Yes, well, that'll be good. We have some other great guests that are coming up. Uh, we're talking about fall art. So a great time as the weather starts to cool off to get back inside and stay creative with the kids or just yourself. It's Absolutely. Yep. Kim from Fired Up Pottery is going to join us. She's going to show us some, some fallish type of pots and pieces of uh, things yeah. that you can paint. and Fallish. That's Fallish. New word. That's my I'm new word for here. today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We're also going to talk about another really art form is martial arts. And Chris martin Gilio is joining us to talk a little bit about what they're doing at the shop today about uh, martial arts and children. And he's going to bring his pup on the show, so I'm excited. That'll be good. And he's uh, he, they've really grown a lot, and they've really kind of become a, a go-to place for a lot of people who are more advanced in martial arts. So we'll Indeed. talk about that as uh, when he comes in. That's right after the break here in Wisconsin Family, so stick with us. Welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We're here at Steinway & Sons, the piano store over on the west side of Madison. It's a beautiful location and we're going to talk with Ben Garber later on in the program about some things that he has to offer here in the store. So that'll be good. But from music to Martin Gilio Martial Arts, Chris Martin Gilio Martial Arts from uh, Martin Gilio Martial Arts joins us. How are you? That's a mouthful, isn't That's it? That's a mouthful. <laughs> Got it though. So uh, it's been a little while since we've seen you. What's been going on? Lots and lots of training this month mm -hmm. and last month. Um, we are, we've been expanding mm -hmm. like you wouldn't believe. We've wow. had martial arts really from all over the country contacting us. Nice. Um, we've had to be in Indiana. We've had to be in California twice in the last uh, two months. We've been there back twice because of uh, once uh, was a camp, once was a uh, refresher camp. <laughs> sure, <laughs> right, yeah, right, yeah. When they're like, come back and teach us again. Yeah. Um, it's been pretty amazing to see this flip where in the beginning when I opened up 15 years ago it was all beginners. Mm -hmm. It's not that way anymore. We're yeah. getting a lot of people that are 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th degree black belts, people with 30 and 40 years of training that are coming to us now and that's sure. been happening a lot this summer. Yeah. That's what incredible. do you attribute that to? Skill sets. Yeah. yeah. We have the skill sets and we have the delivery method. We have the the teaching method is very important to us. So if, if we actually teach our teachers how to teach better mm -hmm. yeah, and understand it. that material, then we actually, we find ourselves um, getting more students because most people, you know, that are good martial artists are not always the greatest teachers. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, and you do such a great job of explaining things in such easy terms because it, to me, kind of a complex uh, craft, if you will. It is. And you make it so easy for anybody, any size, and really any yes. age. So you got the family dog here today, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and um, I want to introduce him because he's kind of a big part of he's what you do at the gym. Huge part of it. At the gym, yeah. Yeah, a huge part. Um, his name is Shogun. I've had him now for seven years. He greets everybody at the door. He walks right up to the door to say hi to everybody. Um, Amazingly, he will walk up to kids. He's free. I don't keep him leashed. He's actually upset with me today that yeah. I got him on a leash. <laughs> um, he'll walk up to kids that need help and they're just struggling for whatever reason. He'll go plop down right next to him 
and you see that kid smile and pet him and I let it happen and we're right back to uh, training. He'll get up and go sit by somebody else. And when he feels like he's done on the floor, he goes and sits back down on the couch. I mean, it's kind of amazing to watch because yeah. he seems to have this intuition and knows, hey, there's, you know, I need to go out there for a little while. That's yeah. really special because obviously very intuitive mm -hmm. and you've got a group of kids. Now, how young are we talking? I've got a, a group of 10 four-year-olds. Wow. It's amazing wow. to watch those kids. They are so little. Yeah. They look way up at me when I'm yeah. teaching them and they are fantastic to work with. But The thing that I like about your working with children so young is that, that sort of like playground bullying can start really, really early. Really fast. And that's what's yep. it's sad, but it's true. And you're teaching them the discipline and how to handle some of those situations it, in, a, in a respectful yes. manner. At that age, it's how to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, who are we going to talk to about it when it's done? Are we going to kick and fight back? Um, you know, stomping and, and being angry and that kind of stuff is not a good response, but a common response at that age, and yeah. we try to redirect that. Right. Um, so impulse I, control is tough at four. That's really the answer right, right mm -hmm. there, impulse that's control. Um, and so we, we teach them nonviolent response to, to that, so if a kid pushes them, they know what to do and how mm -hmm. to handle it and mm -hmm. who to talk to after they're done. He doesn't even like that sound of that. No, he's like, what kid, what kid? <laughs> Where, what kid, yeah. <laughs> but that's nice to note, so if you've got family, you know, even as young as four years old is mm -hmm. a great way to get them started. And well, and I had a gentleman involved. call me at, uh, this week, he was 65, something close to that. He, he was concerned that he was too old. And I said, absolutely not. You know, we're not in an art where, where it's not a young person's art. Right. There's a lot of arts out there that are, you know, the, the MMA style martial arts. I mean, you can't sustain that. Right. I mean, what's the oldest? You see people in there, maybe 40, yeah. and those people are taking a beating. Um, this is a sustainable martial art all the way until we're done. Yeah. You know, and so it's uh, um, something I encourage as young as four and up to 85 or older, come on in and train because it is very much for us. And, and with the crime that's out there today, everybody needs some form of martial arts training. And it's not just about the ability to handle an attacker, it's also about like prevention, right? Correct. So we look at life protection arts as two things. One is the act of defending myself and the other part is that but through good body mechanics and training that I'm protecting my body from further you know, damage and, and problems. Uh, number one problem we have as we get older is, is falls. Mm. And one of yeah. the number th one things that Tai Chi has um, shown in research is that it prevents falls in senior citizens. Wow. So I look at that as it's a life protection art in, in many forms. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't been in a fight in many, 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 many years. Mm -hmm. So is it really saving me from the fight or is it saving my body from, you know, aging? Right, Yeah. right, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, we've got just a little bit of time left, but I want to make sure I mention this. Um, you're kind of starting your, your fall sessions now. Is yes. it, is it uh, too late to enroll at this point? No. I had also a lot of calls about that. Parents are concerned about, you know, high school sports or middle school sports and conflicts. You know, concerned that, well, they can't get all in. And I say, just let's get in the door. Even one day a week is a good start for yeah. kids because I, I realize that there, there's so much activity going on now with, right. with kids in school, but this is a really solid thing to start regardless of what, what you're involved in, yeah. Respect Absolutely. and discipline, you yep. can use that in all areas. All areas, yep. well, yes. Chris martin Gilio from martin Gilio Martial Arts, thank you so much for thank joining for us. Being. We'll be right back here at the Steinway & Sons store on Wisconsin Family. Stick around. Hi and welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We are filming today at Steinway & Sons Madison. We're on the west side and this place is so beautiful. It gets the creative juices flowing. Absolutely. The musical creative juices. We're gonna talk a little bit about some other forms of creativity. We've got some fabulous art projects sitting here in front of us. And sitting to my right is Kim Stanfield McMillan who is with Fired Up Pottery in Monona. Thanks for being here. Hey, thank you so much. We love chatting with you and you have so many fun things to do for all ages. Mm -hmm. Fall is here, so it's time to get your fall arts and crafts going. It is, yeah. It's um, fall is lovely. You know, everybody's thoughts start going from the outside summer and like now, what can we do inside? And you're ready for the apple pie. You know, you're ready to sit down and do some crafts and kind of hang out and chit chat with friends. Yeah, so it's really fun to do that. Just having these in front of me makes me want to get in, dive in there. Mm -hmm. It's so fun. <laughs> yeah. So these are the items that are available for people to paint. Then they can kind of choose when they come into your studio. They can kind of pick it off 
the wall, or do they have to order it ahead of time? How no, does yeah, work? thank you for asking. Um, it's a walk-in make art studio, and okay. by that I mean no appointment necessary, so when you're ready, we're ready. And uh, so uh, it's basically literally from come in and we can always tell our brand new customers, they, they walk in and they just stop dead. <laughs> just like, oh my, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like that. And um, because they, they don't realize that there's so much to do and there's so much to look at. So usually it takes a good half hour walking around the store oh, wow, for okay. them to choose a project. To well, even just like with yeah. what's in front of me, I wouldn't know which one I would want to do, although this witch hat is really calling that to me. Cool. That is so cute. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is something you can paint. Right. And of course, we picked your brain before we started. You can put a little tea light. Tea light goes in it. Yep. There's inside. a base part that I didn't bring with me, but the tea light sits on the base, and the hat so sits on cute. it. And then the light comes out, the little stars, and and you know creates light on, on yeah. the walls and things like that. I love so. that Very little witch cool. hat. Good, Absolutely. Good Halloween gift. Yeah. And then this one. So many puns come to mind. <laughs> That's really so bad. we were laughing before the segment <laughs> that it's a Frankenstein. Get it? Stein. 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 Um, or you could say you've heard the term mean mug. This is truly a mean yeah. mug. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyways, puns aside, you can paint this as well and right. have a nice thing exactly. to use. Yeah, for sure. And um, I don't even know the ounces on it, but I know it's very large. So it's large. <laughs> it's large, Just yeah. plenty of room for your beverage, <laughs> yeah, your exactly. hot cocoa or and other. And yeah, it would look really good with the foam at the top anyway. So oh, yeah, hair, absolutely. So it would be really fun. What do you typically have um, kids do? I mean, are, is this something that a, a, a kid would work on or sure. an adult or anywhere in between? Absolutely, yeah. So a lot of it's budget pay, uh, budget um, price. So, for example, when the parents come in, they might have a certain budget, but when grandma comes in, she might have a certain budget. And so it really depends on the children and the family budget and mm -hmm. stuff like that. We have things from $5 um, on up to um, over $100. Okay. And uh, we also have something called the Addicted Artist Card, which is really Ooh. fun. Um, addicted Artist Card, so every time you come in, you get a punch. It's a punch card. Mm -hmm. and um, But then you get one piece half price. So I say on some of the more expensive pieces, like this giant mermaid that's the little seven-year-old girl in the store the other day. Her sure. mom and her were taking a day off of school, and uh, she really we wanted to paint a mermaid. We won't share who it is. Yeah, so no, I. no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so instead of the giant mermaid, we got her a smaller mermaid. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so there's, you know, and then we have little bitty mermaids, so there's things in all budgets. Sure. Which is the really thing nice. that I love about the idea of art and kids mm -hmm. is, one, you get to do it, too. So it gets the opportunity to, to dive back in. Absolutely. But also, it's if you want some quiet time, it's amazing what kids will sit there and concentrate and and be quiet for a while. They're yeah. so into it. I, you know, I, the thing that um, always amazes me is, you know, we talk about the art, we talk about what comes out, and the art's picked up like a week later, which is a good lesson in, in, um, in patience for sure. a lot of like four to seven year olds. Sure. Um, but but the thing that amazes me is it's it's really not only about the art, it's about that conversation that takes place mm -hmm. when right. your hands are busy mm -hmm. and you're not eating, because when you're eating in a restaurant, you know, you chew, eat, talk, mm -hmm. chew, you know, so you're not talking the whole time. But when you're painting pottery and when you're doing glass work too, um, the words just flow out. So some of those conversations that you want to have with your family or with your kids or with parenting, they can sometimes happen um, over over that's a really art, good point. yeah, that's yeah. really wow. that. that's really interesting. And wow. it's not just for for kids and parents, although mm -hmm. there's so many benefits to that. But right. you can have a girls' night out and come paint and have a glass of wine yeah. or whatever you want. There's <laughs> exactly, yeah, bachelorette parties, um, girls' night out, um, just women getting together to have a time out. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some guy artists that are phenomenal. We have this one guy that comes in every like two or three months for years. Now he does like the most amazing plates ever. We're like, wow. okay, we can't wait to see what he does now. And every time we open up the kiln, it's like Christmas for us. You oh. know, yeah. we get to see everybody's art, and we love it. I love oh. that idea. Have it, you could actually have your own custom set of plates at home that you, could. you and your yeah. kids or whoever created. Absolutely. And so my favorite art um, is the one, there's also a family that comes in every year and they do a set of plates based upon what trips they've taken. And so that the kids get to each do an art piece based upon what they did in the previous oh, okay. year. And then they have, you know, these plates over the years. That's it's such really a fun. fun. Idea. So this is remember our Costa Rica trip, and this is the time we went to the Grand Canyon, right. and this is when we went rafting. And so they they have some memories, not just postcards and 
and pictures on the phone. Oh, lots of fun. Well, we really focused today on the painting of pottery, but you also, there's a couple other things to mention. The, you can create pottery, and you also have some glass art projects, so we'll touch on those another time. But thanks for being here. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. This is Kim with Fired Up Pottery in Monona, and you're watching Wisconsin Family. We'll be right back. Garber, it. ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's a great back. way to start Good back practice. from break. Uh, yeah, welcome back to Wisconsin Family. We obviously, we're here at a piano store, not just any piano store, Steinway & Sons over on the west side of Madison, and what you just heard was some beautiful playing by owner Ben Garber. How are you, Ben? Well, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> Good. We Good had to talk you. into playing for you. Right, right. <laughs> well, good to have you with us. Thanks for having us here. We always love coming to the Steinway store. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about Steinway as a brand in general because, you know, um, we're so educated nowadays, or at least we think we are as consumers, that, you know, we can save some money by finding a box of cereal that's got the exact same ingredients as the name brand stuff and get the same thing for a, a cheaper price. But Steinways, I mean, there's pianos that look very similar to Steinways, but they're, I'm guessing there's probably some difference. It's probably not as simple as it's exactly the same thing, they just put a different label on it. Right, yeah, there's, there's, so it's funny, there's a big difference between pianos, actually more so, I would say, than most other products we're mm -hmm. used to dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, they all look the same on the outside, though, so it's kind of hard to decipher. Right. Um, huge differences in parts in terms of the design of a piano uh, and the components that are used, the types of woods. You know, for example, a lot of people will talk about spruce soundboards. That's that's mm. great, and I think almost everyone uses spruce in some form in their soundboard now. Uh, but you know the other parts that you don't see, like the action parts being made of something like hard rock maple. Mm -hmm. You know this stuff will last forever. Wow! And it's the hardest wood that you can get. But mm -hmm. but very few companies are going to use this quality of material in their action parts. Even a lot of companies are using plastic now. Wow. And you can't see these parts there inside. So. Sure. Sure. Unless you take the piano apart and inspect it before purchase, which I don't think they'll let you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we know Steinway is a well known brand and obviously the best piano in the world. So that's the, the one to kind of, I guess, set your sights on it. But let's talk a little bit about some of the more affordable pianos and the quality there. So mm -hmm. some brands that you have here, Boston, Roland, what about those? Yeah, Boston and Essex are part of the Steinway family, so they're designed by Steinway, and they really carry the same tonal range, the same materials and, and uh, woods in the inside of the piano. The big difference is that there are more parts that are manufactured in a Boston or an Essex. They really use cutting edge uh, technology to form, form parts and machines, but Steinway still does everything by hand, so wow. they're able to cut the cost a little bit by manufacturing parts. Um, even those lower line products are so so good compared to other things out there. Mm -hmm. And um, design really boils down to what kind of tonal range a piano has. Uh, it has more sound, a, more, a wider dynamic range. It means you can play softer and louder. And these are things that are sort of built into the instrument. You can't make another piano do that. Wow. Yeah, and I'm, I'm guessing that the care that goes into making it by hand plays a big role into, they're able to kind of fine tune each piece yeah, along the way. It makes it just a little bit better, a little bit more yeah. special than something like a handmade Steinway. Right, yeah. right. But really the Boston comes very close to that sound as well, so for many people that's sure. as close yeah. as you can get. Right, so they're kind of replicating the design of the Steinway, they're just mm -hmm. not doing it by hand. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about um, sound quality and the different types of sound quality you'll get from different pianos depending on how, you know what you're interested in. Is there such a thing as good, better, best in terms of actual sound quality, or is it just a personal preference? Is it just yep. subjective? Um, a lot of people will say, you know, you like the sound you like, and that's mm -hmm. the way it is. 
Uh, some things that I think people prefer or like are really quite adjustable. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you're a really good technician, experienced technician, like I have a master's degree in that, mm -hmm. uh, we can voice a piano to be warmer or brighter, oh, really, really however yeah. somebody wants it to be, right? Wow. And that's usually what people say when they say, I like one type of sound. On the other hand, what I'm calling sort of dynamic range, mm -hmm. that you can't adjust into a piano. So okay. to be able to play very softly or to get a really big powerful sound or to have what we call different tones colors along that spectrum, mm -hmm. a better piano is going to do that. A better designed piano is going to do that. Wow, okay. I had no idea that you could adjust like I didn't either. to the, the actual timbre or the tone quality of a, of a piano to some extent. You can adjust a lot of things, but you can't add more sound to a piano, okay. Gotcha. right? Okay. So I'm curious about, we talked a little bit about this uh, over the break, about the feel or a sort of enjoyment of playing the mm -hmm. piano and what it actually feels like. So let's talk a little bit about difference of touch between yep. different levels of piano. Yeah, this is another one. If you want to have any questions answered, come and ask me, obviously. Um, there are some things that are adjustable. If somebody says, I like a lighter touch, mm -hmm. I can make that. If somebody says, I like a heavier touch or a shallower touch, those are adjustable. On the other hand, speed of performance and um, responsiveness are really not adjustable. That's built into the geometry of the action. Mm -hmm. So I guess you want to know what you can change and what's really a limiting factor on the piano you're looking at. Wow, it's yeah. so many things to think about that I didn't know, like you said, that were really options. I kind of just assumed right. all the pianos, you know, sort of had the same touch and things like that. I didn't know that mm. there was a lighter and a heavier. So maybe yeah. that's just me, but I didn't know. And, you know, we talked to, we're, we're talking about sound quality a lot and how the instrument sounds, which is obviously, you know, one of the most important aspects when you're buying. But also, I'm guessing that the quality of materials that are used will determine how long it lasts and how much yeah. maintenance oh, yeah. you'll have to do. Longevity has a big part of this. A piano that uh, uses really high grade woods, mm -hmm. you know, Steinways are around for 100 years mm -hmm. and um, they really don't even need a bit of maintenance until 50. We're seeing the same performance out of Boston's. Other pianos that I've seen that use cheaper quality wood, I mean, you can expect much less time out of them, say 10 years, 10 to 15 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. It boils down to a lower cost of ownership, and it's more enjoyable during the whole time you own it. Mm -hmm. The other thing is it has a higher resale value. So if you can play a piano for 20 years and still sell it for more than you bought it, that's kind of a win-win. Wow. Is yeah, that typically absolutely. the case that people sell the instrument that gets kind of, if it's a brand new piano, you buy it, you play it for 20 years, you break it in, so to speak, and then you can sell it for more money? Does it add, is that how yes. it Yes. If it's a well-made piano, sure. generally that's the case. Um, wow. I've seen things that are kind of falling apart after 10 years, and mm -hmm. then that won't be the case, right. you know, right. so. Well, it sounds like it's worth putting the money in on the front end if you can afford to do so. But I want to talk a little bit about the experience of shopping around. We're going to have to go in just a second, but um, what makes Steinway's level of service if folks are, are really shopping the industry sort of different stand out? Well, here we are completely local and we just, we, we want to make sure every customer we deal with is completely taken care of. And I do a high level of customization for people. So um, if you have the expertise to make a piano exactly the way they want it, um, that's kind of what we, we do. We want to we sort of serve everyone's needs. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you're a wealth of knowledge, so it's been a pleasure chatting with you. You want to take us out take again? Take us to break. <laughs> On the piano again. <laughs> yeah. We've been filming here at Steinway & Sons on the west side of Madison. This has been Wisconsin Family. Thank you so much for all of our guests and to our viewers, and we'll see you next time.